Welcome back to My Club Pro TV, Bromley FC, the road to Wembley. Now, not many players can say they've made it through all the rounds to an FA Trophy final. Louis Dennis has, and he's done it twice with Bromley FC. So we thought we'd have a chat with him and see how that match day experience might feel. Okay, well, Louis, look, it's every little boy and girl's dream to make it and play at Wembley. You've done it twice for Bromley and on one other occasion as well. Tell us, what is it like? Well, it's, like you said, it's, it's every little boy's dream. So, in terms of, as an achievement, it's a massive achievement for not just me, but being able to, like, take your family and stuff like that to Wembley, it's, it's everything, I can't lie. In football, it's probably the, the pinnacle. It absolutely is the pinnacle and of course you've achieved this road to Wembley route. You've been on this journey twice with Bromley. We can see the shirt that you wore on the final. What was that day like back in May 2018? Yeah, so that was, that was my first time at, at Wembley and like I said, it didn't end, it didn't end how we wanted. Well, I guess we'll go on to that. <laughs> but, um, but in terms of like getting there and, the, and even the journey we had to get there, like some of the, the travelling, I think we covered like a record amount of miles travelling to games up north every game was I think over like 300 mile round trip so then to end it at Wembley was kind of like it almost felt written for us so then but then at the same time you've got to deal with the disappointment of, of coming second. <laughs> and for non-league football day it's a real opportunity to showcase what this part of the pyramid is like and those scenes of you walking out onto the pitch yeah. the fans really turned out in their numbers as well what was that emotion like, literally kind of treading onto the turf? I don't know, it's, it surprised me a little bit how many we actually took because I think sometimes for like a general home game and at, at the level, you just you don't see that many people every day. So they, they did, they come out in their numbers and it just, it, I was gutted anyway that we just couldn't make them go home. I hope we give them enough of a day, but to not, to not go home with a win was kind of sticks to me that one. Well, look, come on then, let's get it out of the way. Tell us how that 90 minutes plus unfolded for those that aren't sure about how, how it went down back then. Yeah, so, so we finished the season, obviously, we, we were all on a high. And, and probably one factor that maybe people didn't, didn't see was that we had a gap. So our season finished and then we had about three weeks until the final. And after a long season, everybody, everybody would know, like, you're, you're tired from the season and you've almost got to keep yourself going in that period and stay fit. So we were trying to arrange a lot of friendly matches and to try and keep ourselves going, you know, into like late, when was it, May? Um, but, but yeah, like obviously, Brackley, who we played, they were, in the, they were in the playoffs. So they really did stay foot on the gas. So whether that was a factor that we went in a little bit cold, may have played a part, but like I said, in terms of just getting in and achieving something like that was a massive achievement. And you not only got to Wembley with Bromley, we can see the shirt here from the, the Checker Change Trophy final for Portsmouth, the medal as well. Tell us about that day, because for those looking in, it's a real highlight, but it was actually quite a difficult day in the it end. It was, yeah. So that was a little bit of an, op an opposite, because I was, I was having like a sort of in and out of the team anyway in that season. I think the, the actual Checker Trade Cup was my main, my main thing. I used to play in the Checker Trade games didn't play that much in the league game. So I had a little bit more of an emotional attachment to the checker trade. So we made it the distance. Obviously we had Sunderland in the final, which you can imagine Portsmouth versus Sunderland. It was a full house at Wembley. I think it was like 80 something thousand. But like you touched on, the, the disappointment was is that I didn't actually make the squad on the day. Um, you take 19 players in case someone's ill overnight or anything. And then there's 11 on the pitch, seven on the bench, and one misses out, and that, and that one was me. So the high of the day was obviously the team winning, me having a massive contribution um, to the, to the build-up. I even made it into like, the team of the tournament and little accolades. But the disappointment is, and that is the highs and lows of football. On the day, you win the game, but on a personal, I didn't get to, to fulfil like, the sort of end goal. And that in turn shows that you can have all the skills, all the trickery, things going well for you on the pitch. But as a professional as well, you have to have that resilience and, and use those as experiences to sort of strengthen your, your character as a professional footballer. Definitely. I mean, that is probably the biggest thing that I'll take out of my career is that the football itself is, I wouldn't want to say the, the smallest part, but it kind of is. It's more of a mental 
battle to just keep going through good times, through bad times. You know, in the league form at the moment for us, it's not, it's not going well. But we have to keep putting on the shirt. You have to keep going out there when it's not going well. And it's just, or you choose to hide. But if you choose to hide, you just won't, you won't continue. So yeah, that is the mental battle of football, I think. It's more of a mental thing. Reflecting back on life here at Hayes Lane, you're here for your second spell. The fans absolutely love you. The fact that you've come back to Bromley indicates that you've got a lot of love for this football club. A hundred percent. I mean, I've seen when I first come here back in, I think it was seven, eight years ago to what it is now and where we're sitting now. It's, it's an incredible um, change. And like I said, the connection I've had with the fans has just been probably what sets this club apart from any other club that I've been at. Um, I've always liked to think I've connected with fans, but at this club, it's like been a little bit of a, of a different level. So hopefully we can um, end it on a high. <laughs> Does it feel special to be a part of history and the fact that you were involved in that FA Trophy final back then and, and fast forward to, to 2022 and being yeah. there again? Well, when, well, even when I first come here, we were in the Conference South and we went up as champions. Um, from the conference staff to get us into the National League so I was even a part of that group and to see where the club was and where the club is now I don't think a lot of people have seen it the way I have you know but but yeah it's still it's still on that journey you know it's still got a long way to go and I, and I think with the back in and with the way that the club's heading, I think it's going to get there. Yeah, the journey here is going to be special. Your journey personally has been a very special one as well. And we can see on camera now a very cute photo of you at the start of your career playing for Watford, where I think you were scouted at a very, very tender age. But, but tell us, where did your love of the game begin? And a little bit about your grassroots story. Yeah, so I mean, where it all began, I guess, was getting the ball thrown at me before I could probably walk and <laughs> just try and not know what's going on, trying to control it or whatever. And then... Yeah, before you know it, you're playing at you're playing in nursery, you're playing at wherever you are, you're playing football, in the playground, in the park. And from there you just you kind of just it grabs you. And then I think I was playing for a really local team where people's parents are in charge of it and loads of summer tournaments. I think the biggest memory I have as a kid would be summer tournaments. Just every summer you would just Saturday, Sunday tournament and you just you can go forever. There was none of this recovery business. You, you know, you're just five years old, just playing 24 hours a day. And, um, and then, yeah, from there, I was playing with some of my best friends. And I remember me and my best friend from school got scouted. We both got scouted at the same time. And, and yeah, the rest, is, the rest is history. <laughs> I can tell by the smile on your face that they, that brings back many happy memories for you. We have a lot of grassroots football coaches and volunteers watch this. And I just wondered, is there anyone that you stand out in terms of they had a real impact on you and, and helped you really love football, whether it be a, a volunteer coach or perhaps someone that just gave you that support early on? I think, I think if we're, apart from, say, parents and my dad, obviously, always, my mum and dad, to be fair, always help me because I think if you don't have that somebody to take you to training somebody to to drop you pick you up it's that's part of the battle anyway you know what I mean for some people and I was lucky enough and privileged enough to have that um, but the actual drive you know no one had to wake me up I was I was up before before my alarm ready to go and um and yeah I had somebody I remember somebody called Adam Cliff it was a little Saturday morning inside it was in like a sort of college and we used to go into the sports hall and those days there I'll never forget just working on your little skills your touches you, there wasn't even goal nets there was like a blue mat up against the wall and and yeah like, I just think people like that they do stick with me um and yeah just coaches along the way I've had some fantastic coaches from, from young and there's probably too many to name <laughs> well, it's brilliant to hear that as well. And I just wondered, finally, do you think little Louis in that photo would be proud of the career that you've, you've gone on to enjoy? I think so. I think, obviously, when you look at the, I guess, the percentages of people that do actually make a career out of playing football, it's not many. And then to remain in it, again, there's, there's not many to remain at a, at a good level. So I'm super proud of myself for that. Um, could I've, I'm always hard on myself, could I have gone on to do better and things like that. That's stuff that we can't, we can't um, take that to bed with us every night. We just have to look at where we are and keep working. But yeah, I think I'll be proud.
You should be very, very proud. Thank you so much for joining us. And on behalf of everyone, good luck at Wembley this time round. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you never miss a ramble.